Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya here at JSA, ITW 2018 in Chicago with my friend Gil Santelis, CEO of NJFX, New Jersey Fiber Exchange. Gil, welcome to JSA TV. Great. Thank you for having me, Jamie. It's nice to be with you here in Chicago once again. Uh, it's an honor. It's an honor, my friend. And ITW is a buzz. Everyone's talking about all this subsea development. What's causing all this, uh, this movement here? So the subsea world has really taken off again, and it's because of the nature of the business. Every 20 years or so, subsea cables go through a refresh cycle. So here we are in 2018 with cables that were deployed in, 20, in 2000, and it's time to start looking at the new generation of subsea cables. Yeah, and you have to think when we're talking new generation subsea cables, it's sort of a, a wonderful explanation of NJFX, your new generation building room for housing these subsea cables and more. That's right. So what we've done at NJFX, everyone knows already, we took the first step in creating a carrier neutral facility where cables physically land in the U.S. So traditionally, that's not the way it works. Traditionally, these projects were managed by a consortium group. One group took the lead, and that one group became the landlord, one operator. And there was a contentious relationship at times between the one operator who competed with his tenants. In our case, by being a natural uh, a carrier neutral facility, we're allowing everyone to be in the even playing field, which allows common investment. So all the members now are willing to invest equally. All the transport folks that are coming in from the U.S. feel comfortable investing also, and that becomes the logical place where you're going to interconnect these networks that are coming in from Europe, Latin America, and the U.S. It becomes the perfect marketplace. And the perfect marketplace, what type of uh, capacity demands are there that's driving all of this? So today I'm happy to share that uh, TI Sparkle announced that they're having the first cable from the Northeast going to Florida, but they're not taking the traditional route. It's a subsea cable. They're using a subsea cable and repurposing this cable to connect the New Jersey, New York marketplace down to Florida. So think this through. We've had a hurricane season like no other in the past, Beautiful. and the hurricanes came along the coast. This cable will now interconnect from NJFX down to Boca, which means from our facility down to Boca Cable Landing Stations out to the Caribbean. We're talking about bypassing Miami, coming in from Canada, any part of North America, the West Coast. So we're really getting rid of pinch points as we, as we change the architecture now. We're getting rid of New York City as a pinch point and getting rid of Miami. And this new announcement by Sparkle really highlights that. So rerouting around all of these key cities like Miami and New York City, what does that mean for security? So, so it's the ultimate. So it's like if my traffic has to work, am I going to be okay when a storm happens or an event happens in a city that I have nothing to do with? Mm -hmm. If Kansas, if Columbus is, is, is doing their communications with Frankfurt and they see a storm, there's not a concern that their network will go down because Miami's having an issue and New York City's having an issue. We're just providing more options now for these networks to really operate. And in the terms of the cloud, the cloud is only as good as the network, so our industry really does support the cloud because without network, the cloud is not reachable. Mm -hmm. And by having diverse network routes, now the cloud is always going to be able to be accessed. And talking about our industry, it's changing. Uh, for sure, the OTTs are jumping into the game more than ever, building these subsea uh, pipes. Uh, is this ideal? It is, because they're thinking so far ahead. So they are the applications that make all the connectivity worthwhile. And they're thinking five and ten years ahead and making sure they're not going to have a congestion point on their own. So their lead investments are really leading towards the best way to develop these networks and diversity. And put them putting the groups together as well and picking best of breed operators, they're allowing now for this network architecture to be future proof. Uh, and talking about future and future proofing, what do you see uh, moving forward for NJFX for the next six to 12 months? Sure. So, so we've been busy, right? So we've been, we built a facility, we built a meet me room, we put one in the Tata facility to try and help them have a carrier neutral play in their existing cable landing station. Then we built a separate tier three facility right next door to make all the interconnections work and have that kind of quality. But at the same time, too, we've been developing another 48 acres. So 48 acres in addition to our building and the Tata Cable Landing Station makes a campus. Negotiating with the utility to try and get more power to the region, and all of a sudden now we've got a 58-acre 
Cable Landing Station campus. So other companies can have their own facilities. They can turn around and have operational independence, but they're still sitting at the Cable Landing Station Park at the campus, and they can go ahead and connect those subsea cables. So it's a pretty dynamic situation we've created. Nowhere else in the world do you have 58 acres that connects to multiple subsea cables that now goes to Europe, the Caribbean, and uh, Latin America. It's, uh, it's now become quite the small world after all, hasn't it? <laughs> and, uh, and it seems like uh, all cables lead, lead to NJFX, so exciting times. Gosh, um, I was uh, listening to you and thinking back uh, 15 years when we first met, and uh, what a long, exciting road it's been, and so many more exciting roads ahead. So Thank you, Jamie. I, I've always enjoyed working with you, and I always pride myself on the fact that we have this 20-year relationship when we were both just getting started. I was building a fiber regional network in New York and New Jersey, and you were kicking off JSA, and proud to see that you've grown an incredible organization as well, and happy to work with you. Yeah, we're, we're proud and, and honored, Gil, and I uh, can't say enough. If you haven't checked out NJFX, you need to. My friend, Gil Santelis. Thank you, Gil, for joining us here, and thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV. Thank you.